How's it going everyone? My name is Blizzard and welcome to the Minecraft Handbook. I'm going to be starting a new series and we're going to be creating a world. Every single episode is going to be showing you something and kind of like explaining how it would work in survival and giving you a practical example of what's going on. So the game mode is going to be set to survival. We're going to go to more options, leave those seed at random, generate structures on, allow cheats on. That's not for me to be cheating personally, but I'm going to be kind of showing you around some things in spectator mode so I can show you different farms and things that are functioning. We're going to leave the bonus chest off. You can turn that on if you want. It just has some starter tools in it. And world type is going to be default. So that's going to be done. And now that that's all ready, we can actually name the world. So this is going to be survival tutorial and then we can create new world so this episode is going to be how to survive the first night in fairly efficient way is what i'm hoping <laughs> so we're going to be doing everything kind of in an efficient way it's not going to be the most efficient Ooh, we spawn right next to a swamp that's actually really good so that's the spawn point right there if you press f3 on your keyboard you actually get coordinates so you can use that and kind of keep an eye on which directions you're going. So we spawned back there. We didn't actually spawn at zero, zero. There is a swamp here though. That's really nice. I hope, I hope there's going to be a witch hut here because that would be really useful. Uh, we're just going to kind of scout around really quick and kind of figure out where we want to build our house. The first night's house isn't as important as when you set up an actual base camp. That is going to come later and we're going to do that when we have more resources. So right now we're just going to chop down a tree really quick and kind of get things going and I'm going to kind of walk you through how to set up um, tools and kind of advance your things fairly quickly. So we're going to turn these all into oak planks. If you don't know how to quick transfer from here, you just shift and click and it gives you all of them. And so then you can put four in here and if you don't know how to do that, you just hold down right click while you drag and it places one. If you hold down left click, it places all of them and distributes them evenly. And then what you're going to want to do is find a spot where you're going to want to stay. This isn't too fast. This is me just kind of taking my time. The first night isn't anything to be worried about as long as you're prepared, which we're going to be. I'm fairly certain of it. So we have a nice little plains biome over here. This is actually a really nice area to start building a house. So we're going to come right up to the top of this mountain or this hill, I guess you could call it. And we're going to place our crafting table down. And so what we want first are some sticks and we want to get ourselves a pickaxe. And then what we can do is actually come over here because there's a nice little cave. You want to look for any exposed area and then you can actually grab some cobblestone really quick. And with this cobblestone, you can start making tools like a stone pickaxe and a stone shovel and a stone axe already. So you don't even have to use your wood up yet on wood tools because you can use it for sticks and torches and other things. So we're going to head back over to the crafting table and we're going to use that mine as kind of like our mine shaft home thingy for now. So we're going to make a stone pickaxe, a stone axe, and a stone shovel. And these are going to be our tools for now. And we're going to go cut down a couple more trees. And now that we have a stone axe, we can do that a little bit faster. So we're going to get some more wood, a lot more wood than if we were just punching it with our hands. So that's, that's a good step up from where we were. And if you saw, there was some coal in that cave too. So when we go back and get that coal, we can actually make torches, which means we can prevent mumps from spawning inside our home and around our base. And uh, there is a 23 block sphere around you where no mobs can spawn. I'm pretty sure it's 23 blocks. So even if it's pitch black and you're inside your home and you don't have torches, it's fine. No mobs can spawn right next to you. And as you saw, I got a stick from breaking these leaves. As of a recent update, they now drop sticks instead of just saplings and the occasional apple. So that's really helpful sometimes. Now we have a sapling and we have an apple. Which reminds me we should probably get a source of food going too. If we can't do that right away, that's fine. There is sugarcane over there. So that's good. <laughs> so what we can do is dig out a little area next to some water. We don't have to move the water yet. And as we start to break the grass, you'll notice that we get some seeds. This tall grass right here. And then what we can use those seeds for is to plant them. See these seeds right here. So we're going to break some more of this grass and get a couple of seeds together. And now we have a couple seeds. And it's not going to be sustainable right now because we're just starting out with these seeds. We're going to grab these saplings too. But once we get more seeds going and a bigger farm going, then we can figure it out from there and improve upon our means of food, I guess. And so we don't need a stone hoe right now. We can just use some wood on that. If you want to use stone, you can. Yeah, it's just a little more durable. And so if we come back down here, we can actually take our hoe and we can go by the water. 
the water extends out four blocks in every direction from every block. It doesn't even have to be a source block. So this would go out one, two, three, four, but these have to be on the same level as that. Otherwise it won't fertilize it. As you can see, it's saturating the land with water and this is just dry land. If it stays dry for too long, the seeds will pop off and they will die. So you won't get any food from that. And so now what we need to do is go hunt some sheep down and some cows. We're only going to kill as many as we need. We're going to take the sugar cane too. If you see sugar cane, it's a good thing. And if you sprint in the water, you can swim if you have hunger. So we're going to try and take these sheep down. Yes, we got a piece of wool and a piece of meat. And another piece of wool and another piece of meat. And if we can get a third sheep, that would be great because then we get a bed. And then we would be able to skip nighttime. But it doesn't look like we're going to find another sheep. We're going to have to go get some cows too. As you can see, my hunger I ran out really quick from that. And there's, ooh, there's a nice ravine right here. So we're going to need to get food fairly quickly. It's no rush, but once you start lowering your food, then you'll start losing health. And then you'll become a much more vulnerable target for mobs at nighttime and to things like fall damage. And you can see there's iron over there too. That's really useful. So we're going to have to grab some of that iron in a second here. And we do have a good amount of meat right now. We don't need to... Uh, have a farm or breed anything. We can just take this meat back to our base camp right here and I'll show you how to cook up some food so it gives you more hunger. We're gonna take this inside of our little cave down here because it is starting to get a little late. It's not too late but I do want to get this set up beforehand so we don't have to worry about it. So what we can do is grab some coal really quick. It doesn't have to be much, just enough. And then you can make some, you can do this right in your inventory, you can make some sticks and you can take the coal and you can make torches. And we're gonna make 20 torches. And we're going to start lighting this up. People do it differently. I like to say that if you put the torch on the right and then you turn around, all the torches will be on your left. Some people put it on the left-hand side, but I put it on the right-hand side personally. And so you just kind of walk down and place torches down, make sure everything's all lit up so that no mobs can spawn and you'll be all set. And there's a lot of coal over here, so you can see coal won't be a big of an issue if you're collecting it all. If you're not paying attention to that, then it can really overwhelm you later on. But for right now, we got a nice little home. And it's all lit up with just about 10, 12 torches. So that's really useful. We're going to have a little base down there for now. It's not going to be our main thing, but it's going to be a good starting home. And if we can go take out a sheep over here, I believe we can get enough wool to actually sleep through our first night. So we're going to go ahead and pick a sheep. You don't want to kill all the animals in the area because it's it's very complicated process to get them to respawn. So you want to leave a few around the place so you can breed them up and everything. But for right now, we have three wool and three oak planks. It can be any plank. It doesn't have to be oak. But we're going to go ahead back to our home and we're going to make a bed now. And on our way, we're going to be grabbing some coal around the place. Coal is really useful in that it can make torches and you can actually use it in furnaces as fuel. Basically, anywhere that needs fuel, you can put it in, which is only furnaces, I believe and furnace minecarts, and so you can use coal for fuel for either torches or furnaces. So we're just gonna grab a bunch of it to make sure we don't run out for the little time that we're gonna be here. I say a little time, we're gonna be here for a little while, a couple episodes in at least, to get started and get everything situated before we start building our actual full set base. So we're at about a half a stack right now, almost, so that's good. And we're actually gonna light this up because it looks a little dark to make sure no creepers or anything spawn behind us. And we can kind of live inside this area. So we're gonna kind of set up camp back here. We're gonna open it up just a little bit. You don't need to open things up like this. It just makes me feel like I have more room to work. So here we have our little like hidey hole area and you can take your crafting table and plop it down. And with cobblestone, if you gather eight pieces of cobblestone, you can put them in a pattern like this and leave a gap in the center. And then you can collect your furnace and with a furnace, that's really cool, <laughs> you can take some coal, put it in there, and take some food and put it up here. And each piece of coal will smelt eight pieces of anything exactly, so that's really useful. And as you can see, actually, right about now, it's getting kind of dark outside. So we're going to go ahead and light this area up, just to make it feel a little brighter, make us see a little better. And what we can do now, now that it's nighttime, we can take our three wool, put it like that and our three planks and put them on bottom and you can grab yourself a bed they come in standard color white but if you were to get dye then you could change the color of it and so we're going to open this little area right here and you want to make sure you're away from mobs otherwise it'll give you this message that you can't sleep because mobs are nearby so when you're away from mobs you can 
right click on the bed and let's say you go to bed. <laughs> fairly simple, fairly straightforward. And just like that, it skips ahead daytime. It doesn't push you forward in the amount of time you spend, so this is still smelting at the same speed, but it does skip over nighttime, so no mobs can spawn anymore. So we're gonna wait for this last piece of food to smelt while we grab some more coal to make a couple more torches, and then we'll have a good food supply. There we go, we have eight pieces of steak. And to start off right here, before we get overwhelmed, you're gonna wanna take some wood and put it in the same pattern as you would a furnace, and you see you can get a chest. If you're ever confused about this, you can always open up here. And once you get the resources, you can actually see most of the things you can craft. So if we look around, you can see there's a chest right here. So if you click on it, it'll actually bring up this pattern. But for right now, I'm just going to show you guys. If you grab a chest and place it down, you can open it up and put some items in and take some items out. And if you put a chest directly next to it, it'll stack them like that. And if you were to take a chest and shift and click, it'll make them two separate chests. So you can have two separate chests, or you can have the same chest. We're gonna leave them as two separate chests so we can keep our food in one chest and our resources in the other for right now. And now we're gonna go back and check on our farm. We're gonna gather a little bit more wheat seeds, and we're gonna check on our farm over here. And then we're gonna go collect that iron we saw because that's gonna be very useful in the coming episodes. As you can see, all the dirt is saturated, and we can plant the rest of our seeds, and you can compare the heights. That's a little bit taller than that one. And you can see these are starting to grow. So over time, they'll just grow on their own naturally. You can use bone meal, which you get by killing spiders and collecting their bones that they drop sometimes. And you can turn that into bone meal using a crafting table or just your inventory, just by placing it inside of the crafting section. And what that'll do is grow it instantly. If you use bone meal, it'll skip the plants ahead in their age, kind of like when you slept, it skipped ahead to the daytime. So it'll kind of speed up how fast they grow. We're gonna head over here and grab some iron. As you can see, I just want to figure out where the iron all was. There's some item or iron over there, so we're gonna use some dirt as we go down here and kind of scaffold our way over. This isn't the safest way to do things, but it sure is the fastest way. As you can see, there's no mobs down there. There's no real dark spots down there, so we don't have to worry about skeletons shooting off, off right now. And it isn't that deep. I mean, if we fall down there, we'll take quite a bit of damage, but we should be all right because we're not gonna fall. So you don't wanna dig straight down either. As you can see, I'm holding shift, so even if I'm walking in the direction, it'll never let me fall off. So if you hold shift and walk towards the edge, or crouch, whatever your crouch button is, then you can actually go to the edge and view over it without falling. And now I can see there's blocks under me, so I'll be digging down. And we're going to grab some of this iron, and once we get the iron, I'll show you guys what you can do with that. So we have six pieces, we're actually going to go grab eight pieces or more than eight because as you know, each piece of coal smelts eight blocks. So when we have eight blocks, it'll prevent us from wasting any pieces of coal. We're gonna head over here and grab that last pieces of iron just so we don't leave any out. We can have the most iron possible because iron is very useful early game and even later in the game too. So we're gonna grab a bunch of this iron and we're gonna take it back to the home base. Before I forget to mention, you can take these oak saplings and you can place them down on the ground and they can plant. Oak saplings are very strange in that they can grow directly next to each other or directly next to blocks. So if you were to take oak saplings and place them in a line like this, they would all grow. Just for kind of looks, we're going to be spacing them out a couple blocks a piece just to kind of give us room to chop wood down. But if you were to place them in a line, which I usually do, you can actually dig straight through them and dig all the wood up at the same time. And you kind of can in this way too. I think it just looks a little nicer and it's better for demonstration if we plant them all like this. So we're gonna place them a couple blocks apart for now. Later on, we'll figure out faster ways to get wood and other things like that. But for right now, that looks pretty good. I have birch wood and oak wood. Depending on what type of wood block you cut down, you can actually grab different types of wood. So right here we are in a little small forest where there is birch right there, if you can see it. And then there's oak wood right here. So these will give you different types of wood blocks. This is birch and this is oak. And then there's things like spruce and jungle and dark oak. And there's all different kinds of wood that you can collect. So there's some, there's some more birch over there. And that's just useful for building different things, mainly just for looks. I mean, all wood can be used in any kind of wood thing. You can make different kinds of boats with it. You can make different kinds of planks with it. If I put birch in here, you get birch planks versus oak planks. You can see that's a little bit lighter. And that's basically all different kinds of wood are for. 
It's just for different looks. And you can see there's a huge cave right here, which we're going to go exploring soon. But for right now, I'm just going to get you guys started off with a mine, and I think that'll be the end of the episode. It's going to be fairly short. It's just to get you started. So now that we have a cave, access to a cave, we're going to want to make sure we have food on us before we start mining. So we have a few pieces of food, which should last us a pretty decent time. And we're going to want to make sure we have coal on us and wood on us. Those are all useful things. We're going to turn these into torches. You don't exactly need coal on you, pure coal, because you'll find coal while you're mining. And before I forget as well, we're going to put some iron in there. And we're going to put two pieces of coal because 2 times 8 is 16. And so if we take out a piece, we'll get 16 pieces of coal there. And we're going to put the last piece of iron here. If we were to leave it in there, it just wouldn't smell. It would just stay up here as it is without fuel. We're actually going to make ourselves an iron pickaxe and some iron armor really quick. Just to kind of show you guys what that's about and how that helps. And we're going to put the rest of our stuff in here. We're going to keep the coal, keep the wood. For our mining trip, we're going to put the leather. And we're going to keep the apple as an emergency source of food. And we'll plant the sugar cane next time when we come back up. And we're going to put the rest of our tools in here. You will need an axe if you run into something called an abandoned mine shaft, which has wood and things, but that's unlikely for right now. So we're just going to leave them in there. We'll have some building blocks on us to start out, just in case we get a bad start. But you should be fine because you'll be mining blocks up anyways as you go. We're going to take this iron with us. You can see we get an advancement, acquire hardware. We're going to make some sticks so that we can take it and we're going to make a pickaxe and a shovel. And we are going to make an iron sword too because we could use the protection just in case because you never know. We're going to wait for this last piece and I'm going to show you guys armor. So with these four pieces, you can put them like this to craft boots. But we're going to take this and make some boots for ourselves. And so you can drag them and place them up here and they'll go on your person. So if you look at my person, he has little boots now. Or you can take them in your hand and you can actually just right click them in the air and it'll put it on you. And you can see on the bottom left hand side, there will be a little armor level indicator indicating how much armor I have and how much protection I have. And Boots provide one single piece of that bar, as where chest plates and helmets and everything provides more protection. And as you can see, it's nighttime again, so we're going to go ahead and sleep just to kind of skip over the nighttime. And I'm going to show you how to plant sugar cane now. Oh, as you can see, there are a couple mobs out here, so we're going to want to take our iron sword and be very cautious. You can see them burning around us. Some mobs do burn in the sunlight. As you can see, this creeper is lighting up. Maybe we can get it to explode to kind of show you what happens when it does. So this creeper right here, if you stay near it long enough, it'll actually explode trying to take you out with it. And they do do a lot of damage if you don't back away in time. So if you're not careful, you can really get hurt by that and you will die most likely. And so when you kill them, they do drop gunpowder. Gunpowder is good for things like TNT and potions. So it is an explosive material because it's gunpowder. So you can put it in TNT. And I believe it creates splash potions as well, but that's for some future times, some future tutorials. We won't get too much into that right now. But as you can see, there were mobs over here burning as well. There were some things on fire, if you could see it. So right here, a skeleton died. When you get undead mobs in the sunlight, such as skeletons and zombies, they'll actually burn during the daytime if they're not undercover. So you'll have bones and arrows and sometimes bows drop from skeletons so you can take this bone and you can craft it into bone meal and then you can take the bone meal and craft it into white dye that's to dye things white such as wool and other things like that or you could take this bone meal and how I was telling you earlier and you can actually bone meal up some crops and so with this bone meal you can speed up its life and it'll grow to a mature harvesting level when it turns all the same color ish this is close, but it's not fully grown yet. When it all turns this kind of brownish beige color, that means it's ready to collect. And so you'll get wheat out of it and more seeds. And so you have a chance to get between one in three wheat and one in three seeds per wheat, I think. And you saw a squid die there. That's because it got out of water because squids are dumb. <laughs> but it dropped some ink sacks and you could turn this into black dye, which is the opposite of white dye. And you can mix that with white dye, and then you can get gray dye, and all these other things, and all these other dyes. So that's fun. That's cool. 
and we'll have a whole episode dedicated to dye most likely to getting the different dyes and coloring them but that's not for right now right now i'm just trying to teach you guys how to start off a world right <laughs> i mean right now i'm just trying to teach you guys how to start off a world in a fairly decent way so you get a pretty good start at your survival world before i was rudely interrupted by a creeper i was going to show you guys how to plant sugarcane and sugarcane can grow on dirt and sand i believe and if you place it directly next to water it'll grow if you take it and try and place it say right here it won't it won't grow anywhere right here it'll grow on dirt and sand anywhere that has water next to it so it'll grow right here because there's a water block next to it it doesn't have to be source blocks either you can actually take this block out and that's not a source block as you can see but i can plant sugarcane right there so that's good to know so we're going to plant some sugar in here and that'll be useful for later as well when we get to enchanting and other things in the future like that. So now we can get started with mining. <laughs> and mining is a very fun thing. It's half the name of Minecraft and it's half of the fun of Minecraft. <laughs> so what you want to do is make sure your inventory is fairly empty for the most part. You want to bring some kind of wood, some kind of sticks. We're going to leave that in there just to kind of make more room. We're going to leave the arrows in here because we don't have a bow yet. You want to bring some blocks and a shovel and a pickaxe with you and torches. Torches are one of the most important things. So for any mine, what I like to do is go to the deepest point I can and then you'll start digging a staircase. Ooh, I did not see that coming. Okay, so we have another little extension right here. Another tip too, if you take these and put them in your offhand, you can actually right click even if you have something else in your hand and it'll place it and then you can just kind of fill in these slots as you see fit so we're just gonna move everything down and there is another little hole down here so we're gonna go ahead and block off the water and we're gonna start lighting it up I guess and we're just gonna kind of make our way down here you might not get as fortunate you can just dig a staircase either spiral or a direct staircase I prefer direct ones because spiral ones can get tricky sometimes to walk up and down so if you press F3, you can see on the start of the second section, on the left hand side, there is an X, Y, and Z. Those are your coordinates. So you can use those to determine what level you're at right now. So the middle one is the Y level, and that's where you want to focus on. And in order to mine all the goodies like redstone and diamonds and gold, for the most part diamonds only spawn below Y level 15, and lava spawns at Y level 10. Or 11 somewhere around there so we're gonna mine we're gonna start at Y level 12 just so we can avoid most of the lava pits and so we're gonna dig down until that Y says 12 because that'll be in diamond range and it'll be out of lava range for the most part as you can see right here we just stumbled upon a little bit of gold it's not the most useful thing you can make golden apples out of it and soon in 1.16 it's gonna be a lot more useful but for right now, we're just going to collect it, and we're just going to keep on moving. Okay, as you can see, there's some lava down there. We're actually going to head down and explore it really quick, just to kind of check it out and see what it's about. So as you can see, this is 13, this is level 12, and that's level 11. So that's where the lava is. So we're going to be mining at level 12. We're actually just going to fill this in really quick. And we're going to light up this cave so that no monsters spawn right here. And you can see there's a lot of iron down here, which is going to be really useful in the future. But we're also going to build a staircase just to make sure we can get back up without trapping ourselves down here. So we want to make sure our little heads can poke through there. And so this is where our mine's going to be. It's actually going to be up here on Y level 12. And we're going to collect all this iron and just bring it back up to the base. And I think in the next video I'll be showing you guys how to start mining and how to find your first diamonds. So if you want to check that out, there will be a link on the screen for you to click on so you guys can check that out. If you're interested to continue, then head right over there and check it out for yourself. But for right now, guys, I want to thank you all so much for watching. If you liked the video, be sure to smash that like button, <laughs> I guess. <laughs> be sure to kick that like button, like, right in the back of the knee or something. And if you're new here, as always, feel free to subscribe for more. And make sure you hit that bell so you never miss an upload. And you don't miss one of these when they get uploaded. Because I'm going to be doing quite a bit more of these along with my tutorials from now on. And I want to thank you guys again so much for watching. And I'll see you in the next video. Peace out.